For anyone wondering, that was a Coyote Mustang uh, on Slicks. And that was another Coyote Mustang. That guy trapped like 125 mile an hour. I think he missed a gear or something, but kind of funny. Uh, the Mustangs weren't doing too good that day. So that second run you just saw against a Mini Cooper, that was uh, the prior day. I ran a 12.8 at 115, but I was just spinning even though I did a second gear launch and uh, I had tried DTC on and off. So what I did uh, is I actually flashed uh, a limited uh, second gear boost to 14 and uh, went back and that first run you saw was me running at a lower boost in second gear which helped with the launch I launched at 1500 rpm so I got my ET down but my mile an hour was slightly slow another thing I'd like to talk about is on that second run my buddy actually lent me his draggy I'll put a link in the description it's a device you compare to your phone and actually do runs yourself and actually get pretty close to a real quarter mile time and we wanted to compare its accuracy to what the actual track was reporting. So here we have a 12.76 at 115.73, and I think it was 115.19 and a 12.808, very close to what uh, was being reported at the track. As you can see, this car has 188,000 miles on it. It's a full bolt-on N54 powered 335i, a 2008 model. It has inlets, outlets, intercooler, dual cone intakes, downpipes, stage 2 plus, running ethanol at an E50 mix. And I've data logged this car. And as you saw at the beginning of the video, I took it to the track. I actually just got back from the track today and ran mid 12s. My mile an hour was right around 115 mile an hour. I tried a few different techniques and I had to actually run DTC just like that to get some assistance. My best time was with a second gear launch, uh, brake boosting at 1500 RPM. That's how I got the 12.5. You know, I saw other cars running 113 mile an hour into the 11s, but you know, this car is pretty hard to get off the line or I need some practice to, to do a better job. 
but I did try it just fully off like this, holding it down and I basically just did a one wheel peel. That didn't work out too well. But all in all, this has got a lot of miles on it. It's an N54 car, still holding up strong. And um, I'm gonna talk about where I think you can take your car and what the upper limit is in terms of stock turbos and you know what's reasonable to spend on a car like this. So you saw the actual mile an hour, you saw the quarter mile, pretty decent, especially for the miles. Now I'm gonna go sit in front of the computer and show you guys my data logs from MHD interpreted via virtual dyno. So we can take a look at how far I've taken my car and how far you, sh you guys should be able to take your car for a reasonable cost going any further or getting toward uh, 500 wheel horsepower, probably not gonna be cost effective. You're, you're gonna have to spend thousands. So I think I'm at the sweet spot where from a roll, you can challenge a, no a number of cars and without spending a fortune, still pulls really hard and can run uh, mid 12s all day long, so. So what I wanna do now is just get in front of the computer and show you guys, you know, what I consider the upper limit on stock turbos. Uh, the late, I'm running the latest MHD version 8 beta maps. I'm running the E50 mix. By the way, this car also has a Warbrol uh, 450 ethanol compatible fuel pump. That clip you just saw was the Q50 Red Sport that was in the thumbnail of this video. It's my buddy that I went down to the track with on a second day out. His best time was a 12.66, I believe, at like 107 mile an hour. I could do like 107 to 108, well, maybe 109 mile an hour. And he's done just uh, limited bolt-ons, just JB4 and whatnot. But uh, I thought you'd get a kick out of me inserting this clip into the video. Uh, it probably would have been a really good race if we had been able to line up but uh, on the highway on a roll it's a whole different story. I, I pulled quite hard on it but from a dig it would have been a pretty tight race. Here's how my car set up right now. I think I've maximized the potential of it on stock turbos with just bolt-ons. Like I said I got the usual gamut of bolt-ons. I even have outlets and I'm running the latest MHD version 8 beta maps with an E50 mix, which is an E85 blend. And I've taken it as far as I really can, unless I'm gonna do hybrid turbos, but then I gotta wonder if my transmission's gonna hold up. As you saw, like I'm super high miles here, getting on 190,000 miles, yet everything still seems to be going well, knock on wood, right? But ultimately, here's where my car's at. The latest version eight beta maps made things a lot flatter, I would say. Um, my peak wheel horsepower here was a little bit less at like 418, um, but it holds right up pretty much past red line above 400, which I would never would have had before. But right between here and here, it would have probably peaked to around 430 uh, if it was doing things as it did in the past. I can show you. Right around here, it would have peaked to maybe 430-ish but I had a slight bit of timing correction on that one. I double checked my, I had like negative three ignition retard on a couple cylinders. So I lost a bit there, but this is still a good example of how my car was probably running at the track, getting 115 mile an hour trap speed and running 12s. Considering the miles, I'd say that's pretty impressive for an automatic car. And when you're on a roll and someone comes to line up against you, you have this. When you're downshifting hard, even if you just leave it in sport mode and punch it, you, you downshift into that. Around 512 foot pounds of torque at the wheels, which gives you a huge jump and then you just hold them off. Like F10 M5s, for instance, are, are you know pretty evenly matched from what I can tell. Anyway, of course that was all done at the track. So uh, that's where we are. That's about as far as you can take it. I would say some cars would perform better. Hey, if I had lower mileage, maybe I'd be up there in the 450 horsepower range. Not, I'm not quite sure. I haven't compression tested or anything, but let me show you. This was my car before the latest uh, beta maps, 
This was on version 7 MHD. It's going to populate here in a second. And this was on an E40 mix after doing outlets right here. So my peak wheel torque was a bit down that day. Um, I think I had my AC uh, on on that run. So it should have been up in the 480 uh, range. But the main difference here is timing wasn't being correct at all, at all on this run. And this is, this would have probably been in line. I probably would have been holding a similar trajectory here, but I had a bit of timing correction. But what seems to make a difference is you, you have a little bit more up top. You're talking, let's see here, 398 and 415. So you're getting like 20 wheel horsepower up top. That's just an optimized map on E. 50 it doesn't need to pull timing etc so you know that was you know i'm kind of pushing things as far as i can go here is a map before my outlets i'll turn off that last one so that was like i said i had 482 wheel torque there but i kind of uh, i didn't start as low but uh, all in all my wheel horsepower was lower and whatnot and torque dropped off a little faster but there wasn't a big difference with adding outlets which is here so anyway what it boils down to is what's great with the latest uh, maps is you got a lot of low end torque and you can hold a little bit of horsepower up top so full ball dump cars with inlets and outlets and whatnot would actually see i can't even say if this gain here is because of the outlets and the tune being optimized for it i'm not 100 percent sure regardless area under the curve is really good on on this setup here this should have been more like here but you know with a bit of timing correction it's expect you know it comes with the territory it's very common for an n54 to actually pull a bit of timing but 190,000 miles full bolt on still running strong making that kind of torque which makes it a crazy daily driver and it can run 12s at the track and hang with f10 m5s can't complain for how cheap you can pick these cars up there's a lot of potential there would i be tempted to go beyond where i'm at now for the channel just to show you guys maybe if i don't make this my daily driver anymore i would consider hybrid turbos or um but then i'd have to talk look into rebuilding my transmission and i don't know it gets it gets a little expensive here on out you could probably get to where i'm at here for thousand bucks fifteen hundred bucks with installation and everything pick up one of these cars do all the maintenance latest index 12 injectors and get yourself to a point where you're making that kind of torque that that no matter what that is street this power band here it just gives you an edge over so many cars like you can it's you know you'll get a jump on near, tons of cars how many cars have that kind of torque down low makes it a monster actually on the street anyway thought you guys would find this video entertaining you saw me running at the track it's an example of a high mileage n54 holding its own and it kind of gives you an idea of how far you can push this platform without spending a ton of money so hopefully you guys found this video entertaining and useful consider subscribing if you're new to the channel i upload regularly thank you